everyone, welcome back to the Cyber Union. I am your host, Michael. Uh, here at the Cyber Union, we get into both blue team and red team type skill sets. This video is for you red teamers. Uh, we are going to hop in and do a walkthrough of one of the retired machines on Hack the Box. Um, I wanted to do something a little bit different while I work on my Adobe Premiere skills, seeing how I just got it, uh, and I'm doing a course on it. So hopefully the content moving forward is going to be a little bit better than you've seen in the past. So let me know how you feel about it in the comments below. Uh, this video, again, we're going to be walking through one of the hosts, uh, Lame. It's a retired Hack the Box um, system. Um, for those of you who don't know about Hack the Box, check it out. To get access, you gotta go through uh, and kind of hack your own invite to get a free access level. There are a bunch of guys to it. I definitely recommend you try it yourself before uh, giving in and getting the walkthrough yourself. Uh, this video particularly is gonna be a culmination of me hacking uh, Lame and then also looking over everyone else's solution. So uh, a comprehensive solution, if you will, in a video format. So I'm gonna be talking over as I work through uh, the machine. So let me know how you feel about this video. It's gonna be a little bit different. Tell me your feelings. Don't hold back, guys. Uh, so enjoy. Again, like, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you on the back end. All right, so let's get this show on the road. I have already ran in map for brevity's sake. We have FTP, SSH, uh, SMB, and one other service found we're going to look at ftp first it looks like anonymous access is allowed so let's give that a go i'm using netcat here uh, all you need to do is specify your ip and the port to use uh, to use uh, or i mean rather what it's running on uh, here i just use empty quotation marks to supply the password we see a couple of commands here that are allowed, but it's not letting us traverse directory, so we're kind of stuck. Uh, I'm gonna try a few other things, but it looks like a dead end uh, as of right now. All right, so we're gonna see if there's any exploits for this version of FTP. Uh, Searchploit is a good tool to use. This is actually uh, exploit DB's um, dump of exploits. Now, so we see one here that we can use and you can see that Metasploit uh, has it as part of its framework. So we're gonna hop over to Metasploit and see if uh, we can get it to work. Looks like it's there. We'll go ahead and copy it and select it as our exploit. Uh, it's always good to show options. It looks like I was already in here using it. Um, IP's in there, the host is in there, and then we just run it. Now you also have the option to run check uh, to see if it is vulnerable. Um, mileage may vary with that. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And it may give you false positives and false negatives as well. All right, so it was not successful. So uh, we're gonna move on and try something else. Right now I'm kind of in the quick win mode, right? I want to find something to work. We tried anonymous access, couldn't do nothing with it. We tried to exploit a, a potentially vulnerable version. Uh, however, that didn't work either. Then we see SSH here. We also see um, dist CCD. And we have a version number as well. 
This is one of the ones I didn't see in any of the guides. No one attempted to use this. And we'll see why in a second that they skipped over this and used a different one. Um, but I decided to try it to see what would happen. Now you just see me looking over some SMB information. Um, yeah, so I stopped um, and I wanted to use SMB first because it was kind of in the order. I like just going in order, um, except unfortunately we don't have a version for Samba. So it's kind of hard to pick an exploit to work. I'm going to attempt to use enum for Linux to um, try to enumerate a version or just some information about the host. Enum for Linux is awesome. It works uh, pretty often if you can get a null session or credentials. Uh, we were unsuccessful in getting any information from this host, really. Uh, any actionable intelligence anyways. All right, so we didn't get a lot about the SMB, so I wanna run a script to see if I can uh, get a little bit more information about SMB. So we didn't get any additional information, and I actually thought uh, NMAP was breaking on me. Um, so I was trying a few different things out here. Um, here I just had a typo, but it still ran. Um, checking in, see some debugging here. I wasn't able to figure out what their issue was. I tried to even run some updates and stuff, uh, but you'll see in a second where I just went ahead and moved on and tried something else because the map was giving me some grief. Moving on to look at Searchploit to kind of see what's going on with SMB to see if there are any exploits. Um, tried SMDB, but Samba was probably the better option. We can see here that there are an insane number of possible exploits, uh, and yet we still don't know a version. We can't even narrow it down to uh, a major version, a one, two, or three. So we're kind of uh, lost here. If we look at the the other guides out there, they kind of point us at the uh, map script one but we don't have anything right now that'll point it toward point us towards that so i didn't want to use it yet i wanted to develop some more information first uh, you can kind of see my cursor that's the one i'm talking about right there it's a command execution it is in metasploit i jumped ahead here to, to cut something out but uh here's that other exploit i was talking about earlier um, this has a chance to at least get us a foothold on the system uh, and do some additional reconnaissance. So let's see if there is a flaw. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but I do know there is one in Metasploit, so that's actually where I head to right now. Look at that, there it is. And this is a command execution which means it should give us a shell if successful, which means we can run any command we want at the level of access we have. Uh, so all my information is already typed in here, not much, um, just a host and port, and it should be ready to go. I'm looking at the information to see if there's anything else I should know. It looks like it's ranked excellent, which means it should run really well for us. It's always good to look at the CVE to get a little bit more additional details before you run something, especially uh, in a rail pen test. And I would actually spend a lot more time on this during a rail pen test to make sure there are no catastrophic consequences of me running something. There we go, looks like I'm satisfied. Uh, I'm going to run check. This is what I was talking about with the SMB, or sorry, the FTP vulnerability. You can run check and it'll tell you if it's vulnerable. In this case, it says it is. We run it and it is successful, so it was telling the truth to us. Um, looks like we have daemon level access. Um, and I should have did all my post-exploitation reconnaissance, and I did when I initially went through the system. 
I just forgot to do it here. Sorry, guys. Uh, but what I'm doing right now is looking for SMB because I want more information about it so I can get a higher level access. Um, so a little more information about this. So I messed around with this daemon access, trying to run some kernel um, privilege escalations and things like that, and I was unsuccessful, uh, which is probably why most why most people avoided this. There's definitely an easier way. Um, also, with the SMB, everyone else's MAP scan was showing them the Samba version, and mine were not. So um, I couldn't jump straight to the Samba exploit. I needed to find a version number in order to make that logical leap, which is what I'm doing here. Um, so you get to see things a little bit differently. Sometimes you need to do this on hosts. Um, you need to work your way to a lower level access to be able to do more reconnaissance on services running and then use that information to get a higher level privileged account which is what we're doing here uh, Samba version was supposed to work on some versions of Linux it didn't work in this case and um, I was googling different ways to actually see Samba versions that's why I was doing the PSOX um, and I wanted to manually go through this to see if I see anything goofy um, for Samba that may show me where it's at on the system. I do see SNMP, which uh, is notorious for showing you versions of stuff running on the system. It's definitely a really good way if they have an easily guessable uh, public name. And there you go, I, I selected that. I finally got to it reviewing it. I'm gonna hop on over and use SNMP check. It is really quick and it's actually a little bit better than SNMP walk. Uh, that one you have to know more what you're looking for. SNMP check is amazingly quick and simple. Uh, community string public was not correct so that wasn't going to work so we're gonna to have to find another way to get Samba version uh, and right here uh, I'm looking to see if it's see what's running uh, we may see an additional service running on a loopback address or just some service we didn't pick up with our nmap scan so it's always good to look at netstat command you see telnet running there. That's probably our share, or not our share, our um, our shell rather. Uh, which may also be able to give you a version number. It didn't work. Might not even be installed on this version of Linux. And the delay there is me looking at a reference on how to identify version number. Looks like we finally got it. Beautiful. Now we can use this information to identify an appropriate exploit. So we'll go back to our search exploits. Looks like I'm being silly because we already have it there. Oh, I just typed in version 3. So with this, we can definitely say that, that that exploit that everyone else was using is appropriate at this point with the uh, knowledge that we have about this host. Now I'm looking around to see if there's any others that may be appropriate. Double checking the version numbers is 3.0.2. And if we look at the one we're about to use, it matches it up exactly. Can't get much better than that. Now we just have to locate it in Metasploit. Um, just a couple of typos here. I didn't want to kill my session. I just wanted to background it. 
There we go. All right, now we have to find this exploited metasploit. Sometimes the names don't match up. That's what I'm looking for, I'm trying to find a way to uh, identify it. Fortunately, it's not always a direct match. I looked at it and there's like way too many results, so I needed to narrow it down. So I just typed in Samba. And that should help us find it a little bit easier. There we go. Number 13. Just copy this just like we did the other ones. Um, show options. We show info. Info gives you a little bit more information on the exploit you're about to run. Definitely worth checking out before you just YOLO and run something. Just kind of reading what it's supposed to do. Um, definitely important because if something has the potential to blue screen something, you may want to see if there's another way uh, because that may make a system unaccessible. In this case, we didn't have to worry about that. Uh, it ran beautifully. If you notice here, uh, it didn't really give you a prompt. It just gives you a black screen. Sometimes your shells do that. Uh, realistically here, I would escalate to a TTY shell using Python uh, if it's available on the system. Uh, timer is running low for me to finish this video, so I kind of just rushed through it. Uh, right now, I'm looking for all of the hashes for the user in the root level. This kind of how Hack the Box works. You submit those once you find them. So that's the user one right there. Now I'm looking for the root one. So I'm looking through all these accounts, and I'm kind of an idiot because I should have just checked in the root folder. But sometimes they're not there. Um, so I'm just doing the diligence here. Kind of silly of me to check FTP, but hey, you know, could be. Now I'm thinking it may be a hidden file. That's why I'm using the TAC LA. Uh, that shows you all the hidden files as well. Uh, here you can see how I saw bash history and all that. That's only uh, because I used the TAC LA. And I see this sudo as admin successful thing, and I was just curious. I should have noticed that it had zero bytes and not even worried about it. But like I said, I was moving really fast because I was running low on time. So you make mistakes when you're moving too fast. And tab complete just kills you when you don't have it. It's so sad. Um, so that that's also one thing to be careful. If you don't have an interactive shell, be careful what you run. If you run an interactive command, meaning um, the shell is waiting for input on something, like um, using more or less, you may break your shell. So be very careful about what commands you're choosing to run. Obviously, cat's not going to break the shell. It's non-interactive. But just something to really pay attention to. And I finally decided to go to root. And look there, you got root.txt. We're going to cat that out. Voila, and that's the end of it. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with us on the server unit. And I hope you got something out of this video. Again, let us know what you think about these new style of videos. And we'll see you next time here on the Cyber Union.